Welcome back to Denver SC. Today we are going to watch two replays of Serral versus Hero Marine. This was from the w, uh, WCS 2019 Day 3. And um, we are going to watch how Serral deals with um, battlecruisers. So I picked these two replays. Of, of the three replays, these two are the ones that um, Hero Marine opened up battlecruisers. And I just kind of want to look at, um, we're probably not going to watch the whole 30 minute video. I don't want to, uh, I'm not at the point yet where my MMR really matters about how I deal with like late game Terran. Usually it's just make corruptors, make broods, and uh, A move at it. And when he switches into Thors, you just mass ling ultra and you and they, you get GG. But um, if I do take too much damage from early... Battle cruises and stuff like that, or if he goes mass BCs and things like that, I usually lose. So what I have learned is if they do a BC opener, usually I can kind of smell it coming, but I I, uh, I just make a bunch of queens, really, and I get some static D per base, and I just mass out drones, because the idea of what the battle cruiser is trying to do is just kill your economy. So if you're just massing out drones and you're defending with queens and, you know, as few lings or maybe even roaches as, as possible, then, you know, I have a very good win rate against Terran at almost 60% in uh, Diamond 2. Uh, not too great MMR, but that's where I am. I've gotten up into Diamond 1, but this is where I am. I just kind of want to watch uh, this. But one of the things I have learned um, about mass, about BCs is you have to scout what their follow-up is. If it's just going to be mass battle cruiser or it's battle mech or if it's bio... Depending on that, you need if if I see they're going mass BCs, I always get a spire and I make about ten corruptors so I can stop their little run bys and then I just kind of mass out Ling Bane, uh, do some damage like that. If I see they're going bio, I just go uh, Ling Bane, but I go into Hydra instead of uh, the corruptors because the the queens are enough to kind of deal with two, maybe up to three battle cruisers coming in with static defense um, if they if they transition away from it. So I just kind of want to see. Um, what Serral does, and I want to look at my prediction as the um, the battle cruiser that Hero Marine is going to use is for killing the marine, killing workers and stuff. Not so much for like killing the bases and then and, and taking out tech. So I'm going to watch how everyone is reacting to it. So if he takes this at 37. This is very similar to the opener I do against Terran. Another one that I got from. These I got from Serral. I do a bit of an old Serral opener, um, where he rushes uh, the third and gets a delayed Zergling speed. So, Hero Marine is very good. He's a very, very good Terran. Uh, he is not um, a pushover at all. He's one of the top Terrans in Europe. Um, he's not like top Terran. He's not better than any of the top Korean Terrans, but he is a very, very good Terran player. So whatever Serral's doing against him, he's going to be... Uh, this is probably a standard reaction that he does against the Koreans as well. So we don't have any confirmation it's Battlecruisers yet. We've got the Starport starting, as you can see in the production tab. I'm expecting there's going to be a scout here. So one of the other ways I kind of read if it's going to be um, an open or not. All right. So he sees that starport. Sees it's a one 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 opener. Checking gas. Sees he's only got two gas. Viking opener. Hold on a second. Did Cyril get signaling speed? He did get Overlord speed. I didn't notice that. Yeah, he's getting over Overlord speed right now, so I can see it coming. That's interesting. Okay. So Serral opens. This is his um, Overlord speed opener, which is why his third was a little bit delayed and why he didn't pull off of the gas earlier. I didn't notice that until just now. So he's really trying to find out what the hell's going on on the, on the Terran side. And now because that, Zerg, that uh, Marine doesn't have stim... can't chase the overlords down. One of the ways you can kind of smell if battle cruisers are coming, if it's just kind of mass hellion and you don't see any other like um, marines, because marines usually mean that you're spending your gas behind it. You're getting upgrades, you're getting stim, you're getting plus one, and if you just see hellions, it's usually a good sign that there are um, 
just uh, Battle Cruisers coming behind it. At least in the current meta. It's a very good way to read it for now. Or if they're taking gas early. So his fusion core is almost finished. Has Serral seen the fusion core? Looks like it. Looks like he did. Yes, he did. All right, so I want to see when Serral actually saw it and what his reaction is. What is Serral's exact reaction when he sees? All right, let's see here. So he's scouting around. Scouting around. Scouting around. Air Marine's trying to hide. And this is exactly what Serral is looking for, if it's going to be a uh, Battlecruiser opener or not. <laughs> Alright, so it is on it is in vision, so there he is. He sees it right now, so let's see what he does. So we are immediately making Making some lings so we can defend. We're making workers. Two queens about to pop. Getting Roaches to defend against the um, alien harass, which is a good idea. So usually I just have a bunch of queens, and I make about 25 to 30 lings here, and I deal with all of this run by. I catch, I catch the uh, um, Hellion. So he's making queens. He hasn't made any static defense yet. I'm expecting it to come down about five minutes. That's when I usually put mine down. He's trying to get creep out, so his queens are more effective. Acting. So there it is. Five minutes exactly. This is what I thought. So my spore timing is good. He's got one per base right in the mineral line, which is right where I put mine. All right. Now, where is Queens going? Where does he position his Queens? Usually the Battle Cruiser comes into your main while they're trying to push your third with Hellions. So here's, here's the idea for the Terran. They're going to take their Hellions and they're going to be pushing your third because this is where your Queens need to be to defend that. And while your Queens are defending this third, you get a Battle Cruiser in your main. And your queens have to hike across the map, and the battle cruiser gets a lot of damage done. So what I usually do is I'll have... Um, I, I actually usually drop a spine um, over by my third as well, so I can kind of take my queens and spread them out a little bit more. But let's see what Cyril does. So he's starting another queen. He's constantly making queens out of one of his hatcheries. Constantly. He's been doing it the entire game. He's making how many roaches? He's made four. That should be enough to deal with all those hellions. Five... So about five Hellions, or five Roaches to deal with it. And he's got Queens up in his main. How many Queens does he have right now? He's got eight Queens. Boom. All right, so eight Queens. Let's see where they were before it warped in. So it warps in right at 542. Spores are done. So we've got three Queens up in the main with a Spore. And we've got th four Queens down by the third to defend with some Lings. And we've got Roaches kind of popping right now. So he's going up to eight Queens. And I like this idea of just constantly making queens um, out of this and spreading four here and four here. Because then when the battle cruiser drops, you have to immediately deal with um, more more shit that way. So what's going on now? It looks like he's going into battle mech style behind this. Reactor. He's got no Evo chambers yet. Okay, so it looks like he's going into battle mech or just straight mech off of this. He's got enough Hellions. So let's see how Serral controls against this. This is very interesting. Alright, so don't lose the Roaches because they're your defense against the Hellions. So the Queens. He's going Spire. So he's going Spire. Let's see what he scouted to make him see that. Because he's he looked over there and then he dropped his Spire. So he's just going way too fast. So let's slow it down a little bit. So he's moving his Queens. Queens are attacking the battle cruiser. Getting more gases. He's just making workers Spire. So it wasn't anything he saw yet. He was just knowing, okay, if he's going to open battle cruiser, it's going to roach into Spire. So I'm going to watch another episode after this, and we're going to see if he does the same kind of thing. 
So yeah, just about five roaches is enough to deal with those hellions, which is really smart. He's skipping hydras and going into... Uh, he's got two more... He's got two more spores going down. Where are those spores? Gas, one of those gases, spire. And six minutes spire. Roach queen, dealing with it. One, two. So he's putting them down between his gases. So buy the gas over there, between his gases over here. It's brilliant. We're only getting them on his natural and his third, or his third and his main. His natural doesn't get a spore crawler because he's got queens and they can rotate between them. And the natural's a hard spot to hit. So he's keeping his roaches at home to deal with these hellions and he's pushing his queens out and trying to get more and more creep spread. Okay, so there is another battle cruiser coming. Let's see what's the next thing to happen. So we've got another spore. Where is this spore going down? By his third, or by his fourth. So each base gets a spore. As soon as their battle cruiser is out, each base gets a spore. Boom. Easy peasy. We don't need to over make roaches. We could just make up to like five or six. Then we can switch into Ling Bane. Let's see what upgrades he's going to get. He's going double upgrade, so I'm expecting him to be going. Uh, yeah. Okay, so against mech, you don't go the um, shield upgrade because it doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter really, because the uh, mech hits so hard that you just need to have um, damage. So you basically go Roachling, which also helps your uh, Brids at the end. He's making eight Corruptors, which is what I usually make. I usually make about eight to ten if I see battle cruisers. So he just does it regardless. He sees what's going on. He slows down the battle cruiser, which is brilliant. Amazing idea. Let's click. All right, now what is he going up into? He's making roaches. He's making lings. He's making ravagers. He's make. He's made a bunch of corruptors to kind of deal with the battle cruisers. He's not upgrading the the corruptors though. So the corruptors are made. He's going swarm host because he's going mech. Okay. I've got a little bit of a lag spike in this replay. I don't know why. Just give it a second. All right, there we go. So it's going Nidus. Okay. This is to try to take map control back, which is good. All right, so now that he's got the corruptors, he's got Queen Corruptor to deal with the battle cruisers. Sees where they jumped home. Now that he has map control, he can push out. He's trying to get the cyclones. So Roach Ravager against Battle Mech is pretty good. We will remember that. It's going Banes now. So Ravager Baneling, it looks like. Making a couple more Corruptors. And the Swarm Host is coming across the map with him. All right, so basically what we've learned from this is that the reaction to the Battle Cruiser opening is first you scout it's coming. Five minute spores, and then you get, um, you make some corruptors. You should make some corruptors is what I'm learning. So they can't kind of play that game against you. So maybe I'll delay my hydras a bit when I'm playing and get a, spore, a spire first. Or I'll just open up at the same time. I don't know yet. I'll play around with it tomorrow. But always making about eight corruptors to deal with the battle cruisers. And then you have the ability to make an ass load of corruptors if he's just massing it out. But really scouting is important. I think if he was going bio behind this we wouldn't see uh the roaches as as much we would have probably seen more ling bane just mass ling bane against it but that's very interesting so let's just put this on times eight watch the rest of the battle oh my god we'll put on times four we'll watch it on times four all right so we've got all kinds of shit going on Infestors are good. They're fighting around the half map point. Got mech. He's gone into Broodlords. 
The Lords take it. Mass Ling. He's got a bunch of Broods, because Battle Mech is shit against Brood Lords. He's protecting his Broods while he is not ready, being defensive. While he's being defensive, his Brood Lords stay home. Waits for an over defense and over extension. Last little brood lords. He's just uh, doing these. Uh, what is it? Um, Ravagers. Uh, the night storms everywhere. We've got the end army, Brood Lord, Infestor Corruptor. Sixty-five workers. Hellion run buys. Being dealt with. Fifty-three to fifty-six. Their Marine is ahead right now. Cyril's quickly back. Broodlord and Fester. Ducked. How many Broodlords does he have? 16. That is a lot of Broodlords. Get another leg spike. I'm just watching the rest of the game for the rest of it. I've already gotten the information I want out of it. We will watch one more after this. We've got about another minute left of this replay. Looks like Sarah's starting to move across the map. 20 Broodlords is plenty. There it is. All right, so we will watch another replay against um, Pure Marine and Serral. But let's see if there's any differences or any similarities to the beginning of this replay that I'm going to show you now based on what we just watched. This is really what I'm interested in. So I've seen one reaction he has against uh, Battle Cruisers. But I want to see if there is another one here. And now we're going to watch number two. All right, here we go. Back into it. This is on Ephemeron LE. Let my streaming software pick up. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do the names. This. Put him on. There it is. Here we go. All right. So this is going to be, again, this is against Serral and Hero Marine. And um, the this is another replay where it said Hero Marine opens up with Battle Cruisers again. This is actually game number three. So this is match point for um, this. It is a best of five. And right now Serral is ahead by two. So Hero Marine has to make something work on this map. So this is probably going to be a little bit of a different um, game, or it could be very similar to the one we just watched because the last game did go 30 minutes. It was um, a very close game. One thing I'm interested in with this map is, does Hero Marine block Serral's third? Because there is that is the spot that you just saw. There's this triangle of uh, bases, and the third base is always uh, this base down here. Um, the other base is really far away, so if they just send one SCV, they get it blocked. Um, he's seeing if it's getting blocked right now. He might take a 20, he might take a 27, he might take a 30, or, or he might take a 36. Those are the standard timings for your um, third hatch. If you're a Zerg against a Terran. So it doesn't look like he's going to do a 19. Doesn't look like it. He would have pulled a drone already. So 
also start on that. So the next one we would have would be a possible 26 or 27 third hatch. I'm waiting for him to pull a third. Pull a drone. Pulls it. Right about 50 gas. Pulls off of gas early. Alright, so now he's getting a second queen. It's not pulled off of gas yet, so this looks like a 31, maybe a 36 third hatch. There it is, he sent out his overlord to the third base. This looks like a 31. Now the Reaper is just getting in. The Reaper could go to the third base, but it always goes into the natural. See, this is why this is so risky, because look, the Reaper is here. And if it just walks up here, this gets canceled. Now, what Cyril could do is he could just take this gas. It only costs him 25 minerals, and this isn't mining anyway. So it's barely anything. And then if he does go up there first, he can zone his lings up into a spot where the Reaper can't do anything. All it does is delay his third. So it's kind of what's the Terran's prerogative? What do they want to do to it? So he's going to take his third right about now. We're going to see it jump over. There it takes it. All right, Queen's out. Now the Reaper Harass is finished. Spore. Okay, we've got a Creep Tumor. Defends the Creep Tumor. And we've got an Inject on the Natural. And he's going right into a 31 Queen. This is very similar to the opener I do. Except I take my third at 27 and not 31. Sending a Ling out. Don't scout what's happening. He's got one Overlord across the map. Not at the Natural, because he's expecting that the Terran is going to expand to his... He's expecting it's not a one base all in. There's a Reaper still out on the map, but he's got two queens now. That queen is going to start walking towards the third very soon. He has no idea it could be BCs yet. So right now is when the, the fusion cork should start going down from Hero Marine. There it is, in the production tab. Now let's see if this one catches Serral off guard or if he's gonna scout this one. Now mind you, this is not, this is not his um, Overlord Speed opener, right? So he didn't get Overlord Speed this game, which is different. It's just a separate opener that he had. What he's done is he's um, taken off uh, the Overlord Speed upgrade and he has gotten out a couple more workers, maybe out a couple more queens than he has usually done. Um, based on that last map. A little bit more economic, a little less information. Cutting corners. Alright, so that's done. He immediately starts another queen out there. He sees the... Uh, he sees that there are Hellions coming out. So he's sending his Overlord in. So he didn't get... So this is an important point. He tried to get the Overlord Scout. He tried to get the Link Scout in, and as soon as the Link Scout didn't work, he sent in his Overlord. So he's got a backup fill, foolproof sign. So at five minutes is when he dropped the spines of the spores on the last map, which were done right on time for that first Battle Cruiser warp in. So I'm expecting him to try to get this information in by about the uh, three minute, 30 minute, uh, three minute 30 or something like that. He's still making queens one at a time. Did he just make a spore? No, he did not. So he's opening roaches again. The Battle Cruiser. So he really doesn't have any information about what's going on. But he sees an ass load of Hellions. So he knows that this looks like... For me, if I saw this many Hellions, I would say, okay, what this means is that if he's making this many Hellions, let's think about what this means. It means he has not switched the reactor off of his factory, which means he's still just pumping out Hellions, which means he's probably not making a whole bunch of... Um, uh, he's not getting a bunch more... Uh, things that would cause gas. For example, if you're doing a marine push, what you really want to do early is get tanks quickly or medevacs quickly or upgrades quickly. So what those do is that usually takes off your uh, Hellion opener after about four. So he's, because he's got six here, there are six Hellion openers against Ter against Zerg. It's not unheard of. He's got the um, Reaper with it as well. So this is still a very standard opener. But let's see with this scout over here. He has seen that just now it's switching off. So yeah, let's just keep watching. Let's just keep watching. 
So he's got all these Hellions he's taking care of right now. He's not able to scout at the moment. So he's losing some workers. Seven workers lost. He's got his roaches out now. His roaches are a bit slow. So it is past the five minute mark. Okay, did he see anything important? He sees the fusion core. Okay, so there it is. There's the fusion core. Immediately, spine. Me uh, spore crawler, sorry. Immediately he drops a spore crawler. So let's see what he's doing. Spore crawler. Gonna attack move. Spore crawler down. He's making three spore crawlers. What's his queen count right now? Queen count currently is a six. He's gonna maybe make two more. He's getting roach speed to deal with um, Hellion run by. He's making three queens right now. So yeah, he's making an ass load of queens. Now let's watch his cre his queen spread. So last time the it came in at 345 or 545 was when the battle cruiser popped in. There it is. 45 is right when it pops in again. Perfect timing from here, Marine. This is what I mean. So again, he's got one, two, three in his main. And he's got three kind of between his two natural and he's making one more queen out of each of them so he had four queens so my opener is four queens plus three five four four five six seven so i have seven queens which means if i'm going up against a battle cruiser opening all i need to do is make one more queen and i just need to have proper queen spread so usually what i'm doing is i have all four of my creep queens down here so i should have basically two and two uh, so I should separate my queens. So I have three up in the main, you know, four up in the main, and have basically four at wherever I need with one more spine. Perfect. So this is exactly what happened last time. He's up to eight queens, and he's making more. He's done his roach opener, which seems like it's just his, his dumb thing right now, the style that he wants to play. I do a Ling Queen opener rather than a Roach opener. It's a little bit weaker against all ins, but I don't get all in a lot against Terran. Uh, he sees that it's another mech transition after this, so it's so important. Again, once you get that idea of, okay, it's a Battle Cruiser opener, what's he doing behind this? You have to be prepared because if you're preparing for a mech push and he comes in with bio, you could be screwed, or more if you're prepared for a bio push and he comes with mech, that's really when you have an issue. an ass little Ling Bane doesn't do a lot. So he's doing the same thing he did last time, getting the uh, um, um, that is a remarkable amount of queens. How many queens are we up to right now? We're up to nine queens. But it looks like, Jesus. So he's got no queens on his bases. He's got literally every queen in this control group down here. And he is just creep spreading like a beast. Which is why he's going roaches, because you don't need to have the queens to inject as much. It's a better synergy. I like that. That's a very cool idea. Very cool. Very, very interesting. So we've got two battle cruisers out now from Kiro Marine. He's going the battle mech style again with Cyclone Hellion. Which is why he's going roaches. The queens are, of course, in position. Not really worried about the queens. Oh, so there it is. He's made a ass load of queens, and now he is going to uh, push in with his queens also in this push. So this is just a big all-in after this. So what's his worker count? 53 workers. It's just a bunch of roaches and queens. It might be because it seems like this kind of caught him off guard a little bit. And uh, now that he's got all these queens out, his battle cruisers really can't do shit. And now he's just on a bunch of tanks, but he's got Ravagers. And he's just going to get a lot of damage done economically. There's a lot of damage going down. He does drop a Spire immediately. I don't think he's going to lose all of his Queens. He's probably going to wait until the very last second. Just trying to supply block him. Oh! That was really, that was really smart. He jumps away so when he puts all of his queens in that cancels the uh yamato which is really interesting very fun very smart all right now here marine is absolutely effed 
another spine crawler because the, they could jump home right now. So once we get battle cruisers, after you take the first battle cruiser down, when it has the potential of coming back to the second one, you're going to put your um, your second spores by between your gases. I don't know. He's not over and he's not over injecting his queens. What's his work count right now? It's up to 60 because he knows that he's done a lot of damage economically to his opponent, so he doesn't need to have all of the the bells and whistles. Right now, he doesn't need 80 worker economy. How many corruptors is it going to be? Another eight? Another six? I don't think he even honestly needs him. He's got enough queens to take care of it. He's got the spire in case he needs it, but he's probably not going to use it because he's got the queen count. Just wait and see. He's just making workers. Probably getting up to 75 to 80. Once he starts making units again, that's when I will take a look at what his worker count is. Another spore. Just staring at the production tab right now. So he is making... He's getting an upgrade, but this might be for broods. He might be rushing broods now off of this since he's been on roaches for so long. Survive on roaches and rush to broods. This is a very... Um, Protoss style of play right now that's popular. So Corruptors, we've got two. Boom. Five. There's nothing in that. He's just using it to take map control. He's going to catch these battle cruisers out. Going to lose some queens. Seven. So we've got the corruptors. Does he have corruptors on a separate control group, or are they just not control group right now? It looks like there's nothing. It doesn't have them control grouped at all. That's just a bunch of uh, uh. He does not have his corruptors control group. Oh, he has dumb on two. So ten corruptors. So yeah, 8 to 10, depending on how many battle cruisers it has. That's that's kind of the sweet number is what I'm looking at. I should do the same thing. And I honestly, when I do make about 8 corruptors, I feel like I completely control the battle cruiser situation. It's just a new opener that you have to deal with. So really, it's when I drop the Hydralisk Den. Usually, instead of the Hydralisk Den, let's do a... Um... Let's do some Corruptors first, Aspire, and then maybe I'll also drop a Roach Warden just in case, in case he's going in like Mass Hellions or something like that. Let's get about eight uh, Roaches so I can protect myself against it, and then I can switch back into Lingbane Hydra if I want to on some Corruptors. That's a very smart way to do this. I think I've learned quite a bit from these replays. Alright, so let's just watch the rest of this match. We will call it a day. So I'm just sitting back in my chair. I'm, I look like a little tiny, tiny person back here. Change things all over the place. So he is taking a really bad engagement here. He's trying to save his corrupt his uh, ravagers. Start stopping those upgrades will be big, but Pure Marine isn't upgrading anything right now. Boom. So what he did what he did there was he canceled this lock on. If he gets back into that, um, those are the little things that make Serral next level. Is like okay, the the Terran is. Locked on, I might as well just try to kill something. No, Sarah's gonna go into the um uh, what the fuck is that thing called? Don't tell me. Nidus. He's gonna go into the Nidus, and then he's going to pop out of the Nidus so that the cyclone is on cooldown. Just these little things that change change the amount of DPS the Terran's able to do with his unit composition. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Mutant metamorphosis complete. 
So right now, Saros just trying to keep his dominance of creep while he's making broods. What's the brood lord count right now? Eight. Yep. There it is. Battle cruisers are back home. So that is going to be an issue. He's sending his queens back, it looks like. He's got more corruptors on the way. He's getting multi prong attack. The cool thing about cyclones are that they do so much damage to buildings. He's definitely going to kill that hatchery over there. There it is. And now he's going home. So these little things that keep Cyril just just a little bit keeping few uh, as, as being as positive as possible with his trades uh, doing everything in his power to to, to salvage every unit it's just those two roaches that second extra hundred minerals or something like that and I know that he's got you know about a thousand a thousand right now but that's because he's supply blocked because he's losing his overlords Now, Serral is being aggressive. He's looking for the run buys. There it is. He sees the run by, but that also means that there's not as much of the army over here. Ooh, that's big, though. So he's going to lose one. Broods go, uh, Corruptor's going. He's got a bunch of Banelings over here to take out those Hellions. Now it's just Cyclones, and Massling kills that. So Broodlord Corruptor over on one side of the map. Got a roach run by on another one. Just keeping him alive with the corruptors. And then the little push on the middle is just doing, again, mass ling, as I said. More and more lings, making bane lings. Now his sense is going into mass viking. Just an ass little lings is actually really good. His vikings are not good against lings. And he's got a lot of cyclones. So yeah, this is Ling City right there. Oh, it pulls back, actually. I think he just... He knows that if he doesn't throw away his army, he's got he's got the game. So just go home and max out. Don't need to take bad trades. Let Hero Marine push out, and then he'll win. So I think the game's about to end. He's got one more push coming from Hero Marine. Serral's smart, so he knows it was coming. There it is. There it is. Trying to split against the Banelings. Banelings going for the Hellions. And there it is. GG. Boom. Alright, so what we've learned, what we've learned from these replays is five minute spores against Terran, if you know that they're going battle cruisers. Um, eight queens, three in the main four in the main, four by your natural or third, depending on where you think the push is gonna come in. You should get roaches if you think that there is going to be uh, a lot of Hellion aggression. I'm probably going to try to defend with, with Lings like I do right now for a bit um, until it stops working. Uh, I just like that kind of defense style better. Uh, but it means my queens won't be as in position. Maybe I'll try roaches tomorrow. I don't know. And then uh, getting a Spire and going into Corruptors, uh, even if it's just 10. So I'm probably going to still play Lingbane Hydra. But I'm going to get those Corruptors so I can uh, um, make sure I can push it, push back against the Battle Cruisers. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys found this fun to watch. And uh, I sure did. I'm doing pretty well on the ladder. But if I lose against Terran, it's 100% a um, Battle Cruiser into a mech, into a mech push. Uh, that is... I honestly think probably 99% of the losses I've had recently. Uh, if it's a battle cruiser into like bio, I'm still doing really well against it. The battle cruiser opener itself has only killed me a couple times, um, and it's always been because I didn't see it coming and I didn't have my uh, spines down. So I usually put blind spines if I'm not sure if it's battle cruisers, but I drop them at five minutes. Um, but I've always dropped two, so I've done like one here and one here. Then I'll do like one here. And then I'll do like one here by my tech. 
and then I'll do another here, and I'll do it here. So usually the battlecruiser will try to be running around like this, and I'll out zone one of them. So I put one here and here. That's why I have the queens. The queens can actually move. And yeah, the battlecruisers are going to be heading towards these dead space areas here behind it. So that's why you would want to put it kind of out towards these dead space areas where the battlecruisers can kind of retreat because they're going to be just flying over these areas for a lot longer. And these do quite a bit of damage. Um, 15, 30 versus biological against mutas, basically is what that means. And then these bad boys upgrade. A level three damage, they do um, 12. So just the standard attack from a spore crawler is still two damage higher than a fully upgraded queen, which is why you want to get spores. Spores are, are really good. Um, you basically count for two queens at the beginning, I guess. 12, 11, 10, 9. So it'd be 9, almost, yeah, 2 queens of damage per spore. So that's that's big. That's actually very big. So you have 4, 5, 6 queens attacking one battlecruiser, essentially. So again, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.